Hey Mike, how are you doing? Good. All right, so this is what we're looking at today. Yandere is going to be pouring the mold, so what can you tell us? All right, um, I'll tell you that the mold's heating up right now. It's got to reach about 230 degrees where we'll get uh, temperature related issues. Meaning if, uh, if the mold isn't at least around 220 to 230, what will happen is you'll end up getting little skinned over bubbles on top of the mold on the back side or the bottom. And that, that's your indicator that your mold's either too cold or too hot. So that means your, your product is going to be messed up if you don't get this to the right temperature. So we're going to have to get this thing real hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So right now the mold's heating up. Um, we got wear our protective gear, so if you'd like to, we'll go ahead and let this mold heat up for a few more minutes, and we'll get you set Sounds up. Sounds good. Let's get suited. Okay, we're getting there. Looking sharp. It's kind of hot in here. Warm. <laughs> All right, I get to upgrade. So if my face melts off, at least my eyes will be protected. Yeah. Okay. Now that Yandre is in his protective gear, it's up to Mike to give instructions to the team on how to actually pour the mold. The whole idea of molding is you want to you want to pour at the back of the cavity and let it flow through because you're pushing the air out. Okay. When you started the pour right here, you trap air in these little thin walls right here and you cause voids. And if there's voids down there, most likely it's going to be bad because that would be hard to pass at that angle. How fast do I pour? You can take your time. You don't want to dump it in real fast because, like I said, you want the air to flow out. So you want to take your time and pour right in the center and just let it ease in. You'll have plenty of time. Once the hardener hits the cup and you're done over here, we need to move straight to the scale, zero out the scale. We're going to... We're going to add our 8 grams of red, we're going to add our drop of sag, which is our degasser, and then we're going to come straight to the vortex, it'll spin for spin 30 it, seconds, and then, and then we're going to do it. Okay. Now that we know how to pour the mold, Mike takes the team and shows them how to prepare the mixture. First, by scanning the work order, and then select the mixture to be dispensed. Once the mixture is in place, the team has only 30 seconds to get the degasser and coloring into the mixture before it needs to be placed into the Vortex mixer. The team takes over for Mike, but quickly realizes they are still far from producing a perfect mixture. And actually we do that. All right, so basically we are back to square one. Screwed up another batch. Um, so I think I figured out some of the bugs and the kinks and things like that this time around. So. I know where the buttons are. Okay. Well, uh, we're gonna pick the recipe. You got it. Now we really have to hurry to get this over, put the color in, put the other polymer in. It's not gonna make it, so uh, I might go over. The scale doesn't react perfectly. That's it. I'm at nine That's point. It. That's it. Oof. I went a little over. Okay, take that. That one, a little bit. Okay, so we're really gonna need to do that again. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Okay, it seems to be working. Try not to break stuff in the process. I don't even know if this other bucket okay, is. Okay, you ready to pour? How does it look? I think we better get Mike to inspect this for us before we start pouring. It took too much time to get to the vortex, so the milk is already crystallizing and starting to set up. So do we screw it up? It happens every once in a while. You're gonna have to scrap it? Yes. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay. Start. This is actually pretty tough. This is uh, try number three for us. Uh, we're not very good at it yet. Mike's the expert, so he, he's helping us get through this one. Okay, here's your material. Time to move. Mike's already explained to us that we need to start at the back so that we don't trap any air bubbles in there. That's the biggest concern with do this Do I keep part. pouring over here or do I move it around? You always want to stay in the back. You can pour right in the center. Right there. Okay. It is going to overflow a little bit. That's okay. That's why we have these grooves. 
so that extra material can flow out as it's being smushed together. Say when. Right there. That's plenty. Now you want to take the remaining material and you can see where these numbers are. You want to kind of pour right here along and make a little square. That's where your part's going to be. This material has about a three minute pot life. What I meant by 30 seconds was you want to take about 30 seconds to get in the two, the vortex. From, I see, I see. From the state mix. So it mixed for 30 seconds. So that leaves only two and a half minutes to do all the pouring and get it into the press before it starts hardening up. Is that good? That's perfect. All right, looks great. The team has finally finished their first pour. Now it's time to place the mold into the press. Gotta be careful, all this stuff's extremely hot. This whole plate is over 200 degrees. I'm extremely hot. <laughs> I'm burning up. It, it's warm in here. You look beautiful though. Thank you. <laughs> you can see here this material, when you run your stick through, it's starting to barely come back together. That's one of your indicators that it's about time to press it. Okay. So All right. If you like the presser, you want me to. Go ahead. Okay. You got Make sure your pins are lined up. All right. Jump out of the way over here. Look at it. Oh man. I know. That's mushing out. Yeah. Sweet. Then you press Looks your like frosting. And we are on a 20 minute cycle. In 20 minutes we'll be able to demold this and then repeat that process. Beautiful. Only took three tries. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you. <laughs> <laughs>